Okay, welcome to another video in the 30-day challenge. This is Jonathan, your coach through this process. And today we're going to talk about how to find your passion. Remember, we're talking about in this first module about really understanding yourself and that 85% of the job search starts inward before you ever begin to apply yourself and find meaningful work. And so with that, I want you to see that each of these days build upon the others. Yesterday, we talked about strengths, and hopefully you went through the exercises of identifying your strengths. Today, we are focused on identifying those passions and interests of yours. So that's another critical component to the process. And then the next day, the next day of our challenge, you're going to be focused on understanding your personality your personal fit, and what the ideal environment is for you. So when it comes to finding your passion, the thing that I have uh, seen the most is that this becomes a lot of pressure for people. It's like going out and finding your one true calling, and it becomes this big task, this lifelong journey of one of these days I'm going to figure out what my passion is. But honestly, I want you to simplify the process and get the pressure off your back and just walk through these four statements and maybe you can begin to piece together what your real interests and passions are. So here are four statements for you. Number one, just start by identifying your interests. And I always use this example and I'm going to be using it again through this course because I believe it's core and fundamental to this process. But if you were to go into a Barnes and Nobles what section would you gravitate toward? What area could you spend all day in? That can begin to help you understand where just don't don't move so far away into the process or far along in the process where you automatically kind of um, say, well, I'm interested in that, but I can never make a career of it. Right now, just start with what are those interests? And to be honest with you, there may be commonalities between several different interests that you have. Maybe you're interested in real estate investing. Maybe you're also interested in business. And maybe you have an interest in online business. And maybe there's something that's common, a common thread between those interests. So number one, just start by identifying what your interests are. Number two, look where your conversations lead. You know, there are some things that people love to talk about. And they love to talk about it so much that they often forget that the other person is not as interested in the conversation as they are. They're just being polite. And sometimes this happens among spouses where a spouse, one spouse really has a strong interest in a certain thing and a passion about something. And so they have these long conversations where the other person really doesn't have a whole lot to add to the conversation because they're not as passionate about it. So where do your conversations lead? It, what, what do you get excited to talk about? Number three, take notice of energizing work tasks. Now, we talked about this yesterday in the challenge, but I don't want to get too far away from it. You, All of us have certain tasks that we are energized by. And when I say that, what I mean is you work on something for a couple of hours and you're still excited to jump right back into it and to keep working on it. And then there's other tasks where you spend an hour and it seems like you just took all day on it. I mean, you push it aside, you push it away from yourself, and you just can't seem to get around to it. That's a good indicator that that's not one of your strengths. Now, that doesn't mean that we all don't have those unpleasant tasks that sometimes we just have to buckle down and do. But if the majority of your day is spent working on those red, what I call red tasks that really drain you, then that is a good indicator that you are not in the right fit for your strengths. So find those energizing work tasks that you could do for several hours and still be energized and ready to do them some more. And then finally, number four, what do others see that you miss? Now this one is probably when the real light bulb began to go off for me. Because what happens is some of your strengths or some of your areas of passions or interest, because you're knowledgeable in it or because it's natural for you, you see it as easy. You see it as simple. 
But what you don't understand is that others don't see it the same way. They don't have the same strengths that you have. Maybe you're really good with your hands in a mechanical sense, and so changing the oil in your car is, is simple and no-brainer, and you don't see why anybody would ever want to take their car to some place to have somebody else do it and pay them to do it. But at the same time, you need to recognize that you have this mechanical strength and knowledge to be able to, to do certain tasks on your car, where others, it becomes extremely difficult for them. So what is it that you do well that may not be as easy to other people? And maybe you haven't ever realized it. Maybe you just assumed it was easy for everyone. So I want to challenge you to, if you haven't already kind of jotted down some thoughts, pull out a 3 by 5 card or a piece of notebook paper and begin to start just writing down some notes for yourself kind of going through these statements and the last question and just writing down some answers and we're going to piece all of these together so we're going to show you how you can take your strengths from yesterday your passions and interests today your personality type which we're going to talk about in the next uh, section of this program and then we're going to put them all together to really kind of boil it down and make it practical into what type of career that you should choose so again Welcome to this challenge. I hope you're doing the task. Do this task today and we'll move to the next one tomorrow.